Welcome to the Healthy Hair Podcast. Your host, Dr. Amy Brenner, is a board-certified OBGYN with additional certifications in functional and integrative medicine. This podcast is meant to help women find reliable, relevant information to help them feel better, look better, and live better. Here, you will hear in-depth information about hormones, sexual medicine, aesthetics, cosmetic gynecology, and functional medicine. Welcome back, everyone. And today we're continuing with our series of menopause mythbusters. That's actually like, sounds like a little tongue twister there. I can barely get that out. So menopause mythbusters. And today we're going to be talking about testosterone. Now, in my world and the patients that are coming to see me, so many patients have done their homework and talked to their friends and have heard about the benefits of testosterone therapy. But really, I think that still, believe it or not, even in 2021, testosterone, there's so much misinformation out there. And some people think that testosterone is just for men and it's a male hormone or it's just for bodybuilders. So today we're going to set the record straight and talk about what testosterone does for women. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of women don't know that there's actually more circulating testosterone in a woman's bodies during their reproductive years than there is estrogen. A lot of people think that estrogen is just the only female hormone. Uh, estrogen is an important hormone, but there's actually 10 times more testosterone in a woman's body than estrogen. We all think that testosterone, when we think of that, we think of somebody that looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger of maybe uh, just muscles bursting out of their shirts, uh, a high libido. We may even think that testosterone can cause uh, anger and aggression. But what really does testosterone do? Testosterone, in my opinion, is really my number one go-to for perimenopausal and menopausal women who have decreased libido. Um, there are some FDA-approved drugs that can help with libido, but my experience has been that they're kind of eh. Um, they don't work anywhere nearly as well as I've seen testosterone work in my practice. And not only does testosterone help with libido from a sexual standpoint, it can also help with orgasm because it increases blood flow to the pelvis and it can also increase vaginal lubrication. But it's not just the sex drug. I call testosterone in my practice the, quote, magic, unquote, hormone, because it has so many other health benefits, unlike the FDA-approved drugs that specifically have only been studied to increase libido. Testosterone has other effects. And the reason why it has other effects is that there are testosterone receptors all over our body including on the breast, the heart, the blood vessels, the GI tract, the lung, the brain, the spinal cord, and our nerves, bladder, uterus, ovaries, endocrine glands, vaginal tissue, skin, bone, bone marrow, joints, muscle, and even fat tissue. So because of that, testosterone has so many other effects. It helps build muscle. Now you got to do things to uh, help build muscle, but when we start lifting weights or working out, testosterone really helps us build muscle or maintain our muscle mass. Loss of muscle as we get older, the medical term for that is called sarcopenia. And that's one of the many, many reasons why women start to pack on the pounds as we go through menopause is loss of muscle. We all know that muscle burns more than fat, so losing muscle is one reason why we start gaining weight. And testosterone helps counterbalance that. So therefore, it's an indirect cause of um, weight loss. It helps increase your exercise tolerance and recovery. It just gives you that sense of well-being or just that feel-good hormone. 
I've had patients tell me in the past when they started taking testosterone, they described it as an analogy of living their life underwater. And then when they were given testosterone, they felt like they came up to the surface. I had another woman describe it like, I just felt like I was almost like my iPhone when I bought it before I removed that plastic cover. So I thought those were just interesting ways of describing just that I can't put my finger on it. I just feel better. Um, another thing from a health standpoint is I think it can indirectly reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease by lowering cholesterol and reducing blood sugar. It helps promote insulin resistance. There's also a lot of data in the medical literature of how it increases bone density. It can also be a mood enhancement. So unlike what some people think is where it uh, can cause aggression, in my experience, I've seen testosterone work actually better than a lot of antidepressant therapies for women because of its effect on moon, mood. My own personal experience with testosterone is how it helps with sleep. Uh, I personally use testosterone pellets and have it inserted every 12 weeks. And I can note almost to the day where my testosterone pellet kind of runs out, where I'll have a night where I won't sleep at all. I'll look at the calendar and see, oh, I'm actually due for a pellet reinsertion. And it really helps with sleep. There's a really great published article. You can actually um, look at it on PubMed or even just Google the name of the journal article. And it's called Testosterone Therapy in Women, Myths and Misconceptions. And it's written by Dr. Rebecca Glazer and Constantine I'm probably going to get the name wrong, Dimitra Kakis. Sorry if I butchered that name. But it really goes into even more detail about some of the myths of testosterone. I'm just going to go through them kind of a little bit one by one, some of which I've already talked about. Um, but myth one, testosterone is a male hormone. I think we already addressed that um, in the article they write that testosterone, even as early as 1937, that testosterone was reported to effectively treat the symptoms of menopause. Myth number uh, two is that testosterone's only role in women is sex drive and libido. And certainly I already addressed the many symptoms that testosterone can help with. Uh, in the article, they specifically uh, write, and I will quote, that pre- and postmenopausal women and aging men may experience symptoms of androgen deficiency, including dysmoric mo dysphoric mood, anxiety, irritability, depression, lack of well-being, physical fatigue, bone loss, muscle loss, changes in cognition, memory loss, insomnia, hot flashes, rheumatoid complaints, which is joint issues. Uh, pain, breast pain, urinary complaints, incontinence, as well as sexual function. So essentially, testosterone is essential for women's physical and mental health and well-being. Myth number three, that testosterone masculinizes females. Uh, it's been recognized that testosterone is dose-dependent and that in lower doses, testosterone actually stimulates femininity. Um, now, in the United States, testosterone and other androgens are listed as a class X teratogen. So that means that we shouldn't give it um, to pregnant women. And because of this myth, this is certainly something that... Um, we do in our practice just because of the medical legal results. But in fact, testosterone um, really doesn't have any adverse effect on the fetus, although that's something that we do pay attention to in our practice just because of the long held medical legal um, myths. 
Let's go to um, myth four, that testosterone causes hoarseness and voice changes. Unfortunately, this is a common complaint. Um, and because of the myth out there, women that are taking testosterone always want to seem to attribute it to testosterone. But in fact, this is a common issue that affects about 30% of people at some point in their life. And there's no evidence that testosterone causes hoarseness. In our practice, I usually refer these patients to an ear, nose, and throat. And usually there's some type of other cause such as reflux or sinus issues that is found to be the cause of hoarseness. Myth number five, testosterone causes hair loss. Um, there's no evidence that testosterone therapy is a cause of hair loss in either men or women. Um, some women with PCOS and insulin resistance um, can have hair loss, but it doesn't actually prove that testosterone is the causative agent. Again, hair loss is very common in men and women, and it certainly increases as women age. What we see in our practice as a side effect on the flip side is that testosterone actually causes unwanted hair in women, particularly on the upper lip or chin. And it's really dose dependent. It doesn't necessarily mean that if somebody gets that, that they can't take testosterone, but the dose should be uh, decreased if this is a problem for women. Myth number six, testosterone has adverse effects on the heart. I think this is a story for another day, but there's no evidence that testosterone is harmful to the heart. In fact, on the flip side, there's actually overwhelming uh, clinical evidence that testosterone is cardioprotective because of its indirect effect on uh, losing weight, losing body fat, helping with uh, blood sugars and lipid profiles. Myth number seven, that testosterone causes liver damage. In the past, there used to be a drug um, that was a synthetic, uh, which means a non-bioidentical hormone, uh, and it was an oral form of, test, of a, a testosterone derivative. And oral testosterone can cause liver damage. But when we bypass the liver by not taking testosterone orally, when we use it as an injection, a cream, or a pellet, there's no evidence that testosterone adversely affects the liver or even that it increases clotting factors. Myth number eight, that testosterone causes aggression. Like I mentioned previously, uh, I feel that testosterone actually improves mood and decreases aggression, irritability, and anxiety. In fact, sometimes my staff will, will joke if uh, uh, I'm kind of starting to pick on things that they do as they wonder, is Dr. Brenner due for another pellet? Also, in my practice, I've been successful of weaning a lot of women off of their antidepressants once they start testosterone therapy. Myth number nine, that testosterone increases the risk of breast cancer. There's a lot of great new evidence that testosterone actually has a beneficial effect on breast tissue by decreasing um, the breast cells growth and preventing the stimulation from estrogen. If you've ever looked at male bodybuilders or women bodybuilders, you'll actually see that their breast actually atrophies. And that's what testosterone does to the breast. In transgender women who are taking uh, high doses of uh, testosterone, uh, patients that are transitioning from a biological female to a male and taking testosterone, you will actually not see an increased risk of breast cancer. But in that population, there's actually a significant decrease in the risk of breast cancer. 
Dr. Rebecca Glazer has also done a study where she actually put a testosterone pellet inside the breast of a woman who had breast cancer and did not want to undergo surgery. And in this uh, paper, she actually showed regression of the breast tumor with a testosterone pellet placed in the breast. Myth number 10, that the safety of testosterone use in women has not been established. Unfortunately, there is not an FDA-approved testosterone for women. So therefore, it is used off-label. And in our practice, we like to inform people what that actually means, but it doesn't mean that there actually isn't any data or published data about this. There are many excellent reviews and published studies in the literature on the safety and use of testosterone in women. In fact, testosterone has been used actually since the 1940s, and there are many decades of its use, uh, benefits, and even side effects. So the safety of non-oral testosterone therapy in women is actually well established, even though it is not FDA approved. I hope this uh, helps clear up any myths that testosterone is only a male hormone and only used for bodybuilders. Have a great day. Talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to this episode of Healthy Her. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and the web. Go to www.dramybrenner.com to learn more. This podcast is for general information only and does not constitute as medical advice, the practice of medicine, nursing or other healthcare services. No patient-physician relationship is formed. The information in the podcast and any references, material or links are at the sole discretion of the listener and not meant to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Listeners should not delay or disregard obtaining medical advice for any medical issues or diagnoses that they may have and should seek medical advice from their healthcare provider for any such conditions.